part of it is that they're getting nickel and dime by HMOs to spend only five or ten minutes with a patient much faster to write a prescription than to talk through a prescription for a lifestyle change. In our practice, we use a very aggressive nutritional program to treat cancer. We don't use chemotherapy or radiation. We do only nutritional work in our practice, and we treat generally very advanced cancer and generally with very good success. Our nutritional approach involves three basic components as a start. First, diet. Each patient gets a diet designed for their particular metabolic needs. The diets all require the patients eat predominantly organic food, whole foods, whole grains, no white flour, white sugar, no junky food, no synthetic chemicals, no synthetic foods. The second component of our program involves large doses of nutritional supplements. Now, my average cancer patient will take 160 pills a day spread through the day. Again, the supplement protocols, like the diet, are very individualized. The main anti-cancer element are large doses of specially designed proteolytic pancreatic enzymes that we believe have an anti-cancer effect. The third component of our program involves aggressive detoxification, which we think is absolutely critical, as critical as the diet and the supplements. A lot of physicians, particularly orthodox physicians, never consider detoxification or even understand what it means. Basically, detoxification refers to simple procedures that help the body mobilize, neutralize, and excrete toxic waste. Particularly with cancer patients, detoxification is very important because it's great to be able to kill a tumor, but as you kill a tumor, it starts breaking down. Enormous amounts of dead tumor waste are released into the body, and these can be very toxic can make the patient very sick. So we have a series of procedures we use, some of which go back 100 years, like juice fast, that we find very efficiently help the body mobilize and get rid of all this toxic waste. In 1993, the National Cancer Institute invited me down to Washington to present my cases as one of their first efforts to objectively evaluate an alternative practitioner. Based on that presentation, the NCI suggested I do a pilot study with advanced pancreatic cancer. And their attitude is if I could get, show any results with even 10 patients with pancreatic cancer, this would warrant a bigger study. We got the study completed. The statistics and the results were better than anything that had ever been published for advanced pancreatic cancer. And I think it's efforts like this that are going to help change the, the mindset of the orthodox oncology establishment and the orthodox medical world in general. I think most of us would agree with the concept that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem the policy that the insurance industry has adopted in this country. If you examine carefully the way that the bills are paid, they uh, tend to have expert physicians who are heavily influenced by the, the conventional medical paradigm, which of course is influenced by the drug industry. So these are physicians who are going to be in line with recommending treatments and therapies that are very expensive and tend to ignore much of the foundational scientific literature within the last decade or two that has clearly demonstrated the effectiveness of many of the preventive techniques, such as changing of the diet and lifestyle recommendations and stress reductions and exercises, which are far less expensive and, and in most cases more effective than most of the expensive therapies being allowed and covered by the third-party insurance carriers. The health status of Americans is improving a lot. I attribute much of that improvement in health status to pharmaceuticals. Look what people are consuming these days in the way of drugs, especially those over 65. They're taking multiple drugs. Longevity has improved over the last hundred years or so, not because of medications, but because of changes in our lifestyle. Number one is better sanitation, so that we have better hygiene, and we're not getting the infectious illnesses that were rampant decades ago. But we've turned a corner where now our nutrition is worse, we are using more and more and more medications to try to make up for that fact. And a recent study has shown that the next generation will not live as long as their parents. They could die as much as five years earlier. So all the medication in the world doesn't make you live that much longer. Public health is what really counts, and unfortunately that's starting to suffer. The natural health movement is largely from down up. It occurs from the public who have become more and more educated by reading various books, by internet, which they can get lots of information. It is they that are moving the natural 
health movement on because of the excellent results they're getting. So they tell their family, they tell their friends about it, and eventually it gets up and they tell their, their physicians about it. And so it is basically the physicians in large part are being educated by their patients rather than the other way around. And professionals are very uncomfortable with this because they have their patients coming in and no, the patients know a lot more about these natural things than the physicians. So some of them will simply take a position that uh, this is nonsense or quackery and dismiss it. Quack, another word for fraud or fake. Thousands of quack medical products all are a waste of money. Many endanger your health. So before buying a questionable cure, ask your doctor or pharmacist first. Because the next dead duck could be you. The FDA has had a 50-year campaign of attacking all alternative therapies. Vitamins, organic produce, you name it, it was up on their radar screen. If you were a physician, you were attacked. If you were a consumer advocate, you were attacked. The FDA was merciless in going after everything in the natural field. Things that people today just say, take for granted. Well, there were people who had to fight the hard fight for you to have your right to take these supplements well, and eat these foods. This is Dr. Rice's formula. Tell me, why is this good? Well, this has a lot of nutrients. It's like a multivitamin. On 6th of May, 1992, uh, some 10 minutes before we were set to open the clinic, folks were getting out charts and mixing IV solutions. The clinic doors were still locked. When the front door burst open, someone had kicked it in and came running in, pulled out a gun, and approached within two to three feet of our receptionist. And his cohorts ran through the clinic yelling, raid, raid, raid. And they rounded up all of the employees and had them go out to the waiting room. Then they presented a search warrant. They were there to seize our B-complex vitamins and our vitamin B12 and our folic acid and some injectable herbs and so forth. And, excuse me, you need uh, armed force to seize B vitamins? They then kicked us all out of the clinic. We couldn't come in either, never mind the patients. They spent about 14 hours. They drew up a couple of big old vans, filling them full of clinic medical records. They took people's personal, private, confidential records. They took employee records. They even took some of our postage stamps, a couple of rolls of those little stamps with the flags on them, you know. FDA raided our clinic to seize preservative-free, totally pure, injectable B vitamins. We had gone to great lengths to get preservative-free, single-dose, totally enclosed in glass, and that way it can be preservative free because no contaminants can get in, totally enclosed in glass, B-complex vitamin injection. And the reason we had done that was because some of the folks we work with, indeed it's a minority, but a few of them were so sensitive that if we gave them B vitamin injections with a preservative, they'd get a bad headache or they'd get a rash or some other bad effect. So we had located some from an American distributor that happened to be made in Germany. Now, we bought them from a distributor here in the States. So, we figured it must be legal. Actually, we didn't even think about whether it was legal. We just bought them from the distributor in the States. But, FDA had a big problem because they were made in Germany. And, apparently, the folks in Germany had not paid the fees to the FDA that FDA would like to have paid in order to gain, quote, approval, unquote. The major problem with FDA censorship is that there are tens of thousands of scientific studies that validate the safety and efficacy of dietary supplements. Those are buried in the scientific literature. The lay public doesn't have access to a lot of that material. The FDA does not allow companies that sell products based on that scientific research to inform the public. If you said that water cured kidney failure or cured arthritis, the water becomes a drug. There is no innate chemical composition that makes something a drug. It's all about what you say about it. And if you say something can cure a disease, it is a drug, and your making that statement turns that transaction into a felony. And people have been charged with felonies under FDA law for introducing a product over the Internet, for making statements over the net 
that a product was beneficial in various diseases.